My name is Georgina Campbell, and I'm the Educational Assistant for the Dental Hygiene Program at Milwaukee at Technical College. The following training is required by OSHA's Bloodborne Pathogenic Standard. The material covered in the course includes definitions of bloodborne pathogens, modes of transmission, universal precautions, engineering and work practice controls, exposure control plans, hepatitis B vaccinations, and other information needed to ensure worker safety. The training will cover standard precautions and universal precautions, information related to the clinic, any updates or new information, and a review portion, which will cover required SOPs to establish clinical habits and not those we create on our own. Standard precautions are practices and procedures that integrate and expand the elements of universal precautions into a standard of care designed to protect healthcare workers and patients from pathogens that can be spread by blood or any other body fluid. Universal precautions is an approach to infection control. All human blood and certain human body fluids, including saliva, are treated as if known to be infectious for HIV, HPV, and other bloodborne pathogens. Since medical history and examination cannot reliably identify all clients with hepatitis B, HIV infection, and other bloodborne pathogens, Blood and body fluid precautions are consistently used for all clients in this facility and when handling contaminated instruments, equipment, appliances, waste, and laundry. Exposure incidents might place dental healthcare workers at risk for hepatitis B virus, hepatitis C virus, or HIV infection, and therefore should be evaluated immediately following treatment of the exposure site by a qualified healthcare professional. Transmission ex exposure risk. Direct exposure, contact with blood or fluids or other secretions during patient treatment, procedures such as exposing and processing of x-rays, cleaning, disinfecting, and sterilizing of instruments and other laboratory procedures. Indirect exposure is contact with contaminated instruments, equipment, and environmental surfaces within the sterilization area in the x-ray suites and each operatory cubicle. Airborne exposure contaminant contact such as droplets, splatter, and aerosols when using APAD or parkels. Milwaukee Area Technical College makes available the hepatitis B vaccine series to all employees who due to their job classification are at risk of occupational exposure and post-exposure follow-up to all employees who have had an exposure incident. Hepatitis B vaccination is made available to all employees covered by the OSHA Bloodborne Pathogen Standard after the employee has received training in occupational exposure and within 10 working days of initial assignment to all employees who are at risk of occupational exposure. If the employee initially declines the hepatitis B vaccination, but at a later date while still covered under the Bloodborne Pathogen Standard, decides to accept the vaccination, the vaccination should then be made available at no cost to the employee. All employees, student clinicians who decline the hepatitis B vaccination have signed the OSHA required waiver indicating their refusal. These refusal forms are filed with the employees or the student's medical records. In the case of a student, the school nurse in the MATC Health Center. In the case of the employee, the form is kept in the medical file in Human Resources. Uniform Regulations for Dental Hygiene and Dental Health Safety Students White Regulation Lab Coat, Clean and Pressed White or Seal Blue Uniform Scrub Pants Name Pin White Hose or High Socks Clean White Shoes Hair Neat, Clean, Conservative in Style, Free of Loose Ends and Away from the Face Hands Manicure Short Nails No Color Nail Polish Teeth Clean in good oral health and worthy of example in counseling patients. Breath, fresh and sweet. Jewelry. A watch with conservative band can be worn. No visible jewelry to be worn when in the uniform. Safety glasses to be worn at all times in the clinic. Masks and gloves will be worn for effective barriers in infection control. 
disregard of uniform regulations will constitute expulsion from clinic and or lab classes. It is required that when handling instruments that uniform along with safety glasses, utility gloves, and a mask are worn. Pre-label blue wrap. Print neatly and clearly. Remember to ultrasonic your cassette for 16 minutes. Rinse it, pat dry it, and insert the stray gauge. Pull wrapping and labeling. Your cassette should be color coded. And by the way, this is a good example of wrapping and labeling. The standard and slim-like cassettes are wrapped in a recyclable pouch, which have been pre-labeled with name and number. After the inserts are used, please rinse under warm water, making sure that there are no signs of blood left on the tips. Pad dry, insert stereo gauge, place in the recyclable pouch, tape all the way around with masking tape, Write the date on the tape and also place a small piece of indicator tape as shown on the picture. The steam sterilization integrators or stereo gauge are chemical integrators consisting of a paper wick. The steam and temperature sensitive chemical pellet contained in a paper or film on a paper or film foil laminate. The chemical pellet melts and migrates as a dark color along the paper wick. The migration is visible through a window marked Accept or Reject. The extent of migration depends on the steam, time, and temperature. It tests adequate sterilization for each cassette wrapped pouch or each load as a whole ran through autoclaving. Autoclave performance testing is also necessary to ensure proper sterilization. Calcinic performance testing is also important in the thoroughness of the pre-cleaning steps. Remember to always turn off the ultrasonic before inserting cassettes and reset timer to 16 minutes. The following video is provided as a visual aid to the SOP for partials and dentures found in your operations manual. Single-use exam gloves such as nitrile and vinyl are worn at all times where it is anticipated that the student or employee will have hand contact with blood or other potential infectious material. These gloves are replaced when they become contaminated or as soon as their ability to function as a barrier is compromised, torn, punctured, or moist on the inside. These gloves are not washed or decontaminated for reuse. Reusable heavy-duty utility gloves are worn when cleaning in the contaminating client treatment areas, transporting and cleaning contaminating instruments after client treatment is completed, cleaning and decontaminating lab areas. Situations requiring use of gloves and which type is indicated on the PPE usage chart found on the Bloodborne Pathogens page 15 of the Operations Manual. Contamination of all surfaces or equipment contaminated with blood or other potential infectious material is accomplished by utilizing the following EPA register tuberculocidal disinfectant, Birex, a phenol made by Biotrol. Birex kills HIV and TB on inanimate surfaces in 10 minutes. At the end of a clinical day, run one quart of a slug buster, the vacuum line cleaner through the saliva ejector and HVE lines. Leave lines on to run for one minute to clear the lines. To eliminate or minimize exposure to all student clinicians and personnel, regulated waste containers have been labeled with an orange and black letter biohazard labeled. Regulated waste Regulated waste means liquid or semi-liquid blood or other potentially infectious materials. Contaminated items that will release blood or other potentially infectious materials in a liquid or semi-liquid state if compressed. Items that are caked with dry blood or other potentially infectious materials and are capable of releasing these materials during handling as well as contaminated sharps and waste containing blood or other potentially infectious materials.
Regular waste is considered to be any item that does not contain grippable, purable, saturated, or caked with blood or other body fluids. Gauze that may be tainted but not grossly saturated with blood or other body fluids. Head coverings, food coverings, tissues or clinics, paper towels, paperwork or worksheets, a toothbrush used intraorally after rinse and decontaminated, a sterilized gauze which was grossly saturated with blood, a sterilized sponges and paper towels that were used to clean up. Sharp containers located on the counter in the east end of the sterilization area by the regulated waste containers are disposed of as regulated biohazardous waste. What is disposed in the sharp containers? Needles, carpels, irrigating syringes, extracted teeth without amalgam, cannulas, glass tubing, slides, broken glass, broken instrument tips, and any sharp item capable of injuring or puncturing. The Centers for Disease Control recommends heat sterilization of all high and low speed hand pieces, use intraorally, and reusable brophy angles and air water syringes. The Centers for Disease Control also recommends flushing of water lines at the beginning of the day and in between clients. The same goes for polishers or APFs and ultrasound and parkels or bobcats. The Centers for Disease Control recommends this because patient material may be retained and expelled during subsequent uses. Although patient chairs have a built-in anti-retraction valve to prevent aspiration of patient material from the air water syringe, the water lines need to be flushed, and the student clinician should make a point to have the patient not close the lips around the saliva ejectors.